Now we're going to build our first system from scratch. We're going to include all the options and all the robotware and everything we need. Because we're going to build one from scratch, we actually have to manually go through and click everything. But if we were to build it from a, a backup, all these things would be pre-selected for us and we wouldn't, one, see all the options and two, have to click as much. So next, we're going to add the robotware. And I have this little checkbox ticked to show only the latest because I only want to see the latest and greatest. But I have many installed on my computer. For example, you can see all the different revisions of motor and gear units. So we're just going to say show latest, click on our robotware. If you had additional um, features for your cabinet, like you had spotware or you had positioners or tracks, you can come back here and add these additional options. And this just brings in the code for you. So you don't have to do as much work. You don't have to write all this code in the first place. It just makes your life a lot easier. This system is bare bones. We don't need any of that. We can just roll with robotware. Now again, if you connected with the system with a backup or connected to one on the network, you would actually see the license on this page right here. Because this is a virtual system from scratch, it's just going to import a virtual license. The advantage or disadvantage to this is it shows you every option. So you have to go through and click every single option, which is kind of tedious. If it was an existing system, you'd see only the options available to you on that license, which makes it go a lot easier. So when it gets to this page, this is the system. So this is where we're going to pick all the software options that we want for our controller and some default settings, like we want it to be English. Um, in this case, we have the option to pick all these because we have the open license, the virtual license. So we're just going to pick Ethernet IP. And I'm just going to pick some of the more common ones, which is going to be motion events, world zones which triggers I.O. when you enter in a specific zone. Soft move, motion supervision is a very common one. PC interface is a common one. Multitasking, and there you go. Again, if you had a real license, only a handful of these would be visible. Virtual license allows you to go ahead and test all these options and see whether you need them or not, but only virtually. So once we're done picking the software options that we want to include, like maybe we want an FTP client on here as well, then we can come over here to drive module configuration. And again, if it was a real controller, you'd only see the robot included on this license. Since this is virtual, we can pick anything we want. 6700 is a very common one. When you select 6700, it's going to automatically click the correct drive unit, so you don't have to worry about that. And then over here on applications, if you had an additional application that you wanted to include, you could click on whatever you'd like. Once you're all finished with your selections, we're going to go ahead and hit next. It has a summary so you can review what you want to do. Yep, all these look good. And now hit apply. Yes. And this is going to build your entire system for you. And if you're connected to a real controller, it'll throw up a prompt say, hey, would you like to download this on the controller? Yes or no? And you hit yes, and it'll take a little bit longer. But since we're just doing a virtual system, it pops up here in our virtual list, my first controller. And now we're done with the installation manager. It's just a tool to build systems. And now we can actually go to our virtual controllers and find whatever system, my first controller.